We're here at Sebring. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm speaking with John Persley today, who's got an interesting product you want to tell us about. As the symbol shows here and the, and the sign says here, it's the flare assist. And at first when I thought about this, I went, well, you know, this is the thing that every pilot grapples with is when the right time to flare in. The magic of your device that you're going to tell us about is that on what's sometimes called a mirror lake finish, when water is very calm and you look down at it in a seaplane, you just see yourself. And it's remarkably hard to tell. So we always used to say, well, if it's that kind of thing, you just sort of set up a, a flight attitude and you wait until you hit the water. That's a little, I mean, it works and it has worked for many years, but it's a little haphazard. You got a better idea. What are we talking about here? Well, first of all, I'm a seaplane pilot. I own one of these sea rays. And in my first transition training, I discovered this problem. Uh, I had my instructor on board and I was coming in over a smooth lake and he said, let's just make a low pass and not try to land. And right when he said the word land, we <laughs> bounced off the water. Neither one of us knew it was there. We just didn't realize how It's very hard to tell. Yeah. Sounds like, oh, you guys got to be exaggerating, but it's not. It's tough. So uh, then I, of course, as I got my T-plane rating, they, they taught me to do exactly as you're saying. You set up over your last visual reference, a typical shoreline, the grass, the beach, whatever, and then just hold a, a very low rate of descent until you hit something, presumably the water. Right. Well, uh, my background, I'm from electrical engineering, I've developed sensors all my life. Uh, I've built companies around building sensing devices, and I thought, this has got to have a solution with some kind of sensing device. And I looked out there to buy something, and there was nothing available. Uh, I've never heard of any kind exist. of device like right. this before. Now, in the commercial and, and military sector, there's radar altimetry. Yeah. But uh, A, it's very expensive, yeah. complicated. It's just outside of the range. Well, and it's of, still not really meant for that no, kind not. of low That's level. Right. Yeah, in fact, the radar will That's hit 200 feet off the ground, not <laughs> five feet off the ground. Exactly. Right? So um, I approached this uh, as, a, as a problem looking all across the electromagnetic spectrum. How, what, what spectrum element could be used for this purpose? And uh, I started thinking about how bats find their environment. And bats use a uh, ultra high frequency sonar that's pulsed. And uh, it's around 75 kilohertz, almost to the radio band. It's way high in sound, almost to radio frequencies. Yeah, but it, it comes out in brief pulses. So that's where I started. Uh, this effort began over two years ago. I started prototyping. Um, I've gone through several iterations now over this time. Now we're in production with this system. Um, it's basically made up of a ultrasonic transducer. This weighs uh, about 24 ounces. It mounts on the aircraft. We make custom bracketing to mount on whatever brand of aircraft it might be. Then uh, inside of the aircraft, there's a computer mounted in this box. All this stuff is waterproof. It can be taken underwater. Ah, okay. Uh, there's a cable that connects from here to here. There's another one that connects into the uh, aircraft intercom system, or to your headset. Okay, so you're going to get an audible. Then. You're going to get an audible. Okay. So the, the pilot's plenty busy during that last phase of flight, and uh, he's spoken to by this box. It says starts out at 15 feet, so it says 15. If you maintain 15, say 15 again, okay. as you hold that out, on a, on a one second basis. One second basis. Okay. If you drop to 10, then you get the 10, and then 8, 6, 4, and then 3, 2, 1. So it's 5 foot, 2 foot, and 1 foot increments. Okay. It's accurate to within 3 inches. Wow. And when you get down low level flying, something I just love to do is uh, cruising over the water, not really intending to land. But, but just maintaining. Having to talk to you and say 10, 10, 10, right. 10, or 10, three, or, or whatever, two, right. or one. Uh, it is so much fun to be able to hold that altitude accurately and know you're at that altitude, right. whether it's rough water, smooth water, whatever it is. Uh, I've also found that uh, landing on a runway, whether it's grass or asphalt. You find it handy on a oh. on hard surface too? Absolutely. So this is not necessarily a seaplane only thing. Not at all. All right, so now we're looking at the actual installation and that small little cylinder that you showed me is mounted right on the uh, strut of the airplane here. So clearly I'm looking straight down now. I've got a clear view of the uh, ground, water, what have you down there. This is the only this is the only thing you see on the airplane? That's the only thing on the outside of the aircraft. The, uh, the beam of these high frequency sound waves comes down this way. Fairly small, almost like a, a flashlight shooting down. And that, it's then reflected back from whatever the surface might be. 
radar. So this is not radar, this is totally radio frequency. This is ultra ultrasonics, which is uh, at 75 kilohertz. If you were to say to uh, an electrical communications guy, uh, is 75 kilohertz sound or is it radio? It's, it's at the very low end of radio and the very high end of sound. So it, but they refer to it as ultrasonics. Ultrasonics, okay. It's uh, it's interesting. I, I didn't realize this at first, but when I started uh, looking into how a bat communicates, it turns out that they do that by pulse, high frequency, 60 to 75 kilohertz frequency. They emit kind of a squeak, I would might call it, but I'm not going to hear it either, right? Right, you don't hear it. It's way above our hearing range. Um, so very high then, yeah, yeah. an ultra high. Okay. That signal is is then has to be processed because there's all kinds of, of possible. Uh, Spurious signals that we have. We could get a reflection off of here, for example, off to the gear. Ah, I uh, see, okay. And that's what the went, box is. We might come back up and reflect and get a double tap off of the strut, strut or off the wing. So there's there's um, a computer involved. Okay. So we take the raw data from the transducer and then we have to massage that data, filter it, average it, figure out what's valid and what isn't. And that's that's where the real effort has been. And so this mounts somewhere in the aircraft, doesn't have to be visible. There is a, a light on here that lets you know that it's working, but you really don't need to see that. This can be inside, underneath the seat, or wherever. It only has to hook up to three things. It hooks to this transducer. It hooks to a power connector that can plug into the cigarette lighter on the airplane. And it also hooks to a cable that goes into your headset system. Okay. You can plug into the intercom, it can plug right into the headset itself, it's an auxiliary jack. However you can get it into your headset. And have you had uh, feedback from the community? Are people looking for this? Well, we are getting really good feedback. Uh, I'm in Austin, Texas, where my uh, airplane is based and where I live. Uh, there's uh, some Sea Ray owners in that region in Texas. Uh, there's, of course, because this, I own a Sea Ray, I'm to be in communication with those guys, you know. But um, as you mentioned earlier, this can be utilized not just on seaplanes, but any brand. Uh, it can also be a wheeled aircraft. You don't know, have to have it. Water, sure. Off so your market is basically any airplane. Any uh, airplane. well, well, at the current any time, any experimental aircraft. Yes, right. Something you can modify, right. do things to. Exactly. Well, we've asked you a bunch of questions about this. Do you have a website that you can tell us about? And we'll put it up on the screen for people so they can yeah. find out more. The way I'm doing this is uh, Jim Raddy at Recreational Mobility is the exclusive distributor for this product. Okay. So uh, I have great confidence and, and trust in Jim. He. Uh, helped me build my airplane. I've done a lot of uh, work with him and, and with people he's built planes for and, and I just uh, uh, I wanted to have him as our, our avenue to the Sea Ray marketplace and also other aircraft. So uh, Jim's our guy in uh, recreationalmobility.com I believe it is. SeaRaySpecialties.com. SeaRaySpecialties.com I think is what it is. So that's where we'll find your flare assist module that uh, designed by John Persley. Um, I don't have anything on that yet, but we'll get some more on that. There's plenty on the Sea Ray, and all the light sport community airplanes are on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here at Seabrain. Thank you, Dan. 15. 15. 15. 10. 8. Six, four, three, two, one.